Hebrews chapter 9. I really appreciate you being here this afternoon. Your dedication to our Lord is encouraging to me personally. Hebrews chapter 9, <clears throat> verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Good things to come. God is so good to us that he saved the best wine to last. We got Jesus, they got Moses. But their sins were not forgiven until we had the Lord Jesus Christ come himself. The first two words of our verse, but Christ, contrary to their high priest. Uh, their high priest, verse 7, into the second uh, veil went the high priest, their high priest, alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself, and the errors of the people offered for himself, and the errors. Verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present, back then, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, but Christ. Oh, how precious he is. Chapter 7, verse 26. 26, I almost didn't say it. Chapter 7, verse 26. For such an high priest became us, and there was none like this back then, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up, sacri offer up sacrifice first for his own sins. That man couldn't enter in there till he offered a sacrifice for his own sins. And then for the peoples. For this he, Christ, did once when he offered up himself. Isn't that good? Chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which they were just the figures of the true. But Christ is entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God. I dare you to read them last two words. For us. He didn't go in, verse 27 of chapter 7, first for his own sins at all because when he went in he was holy before he went in he was harmless before any sacrifice was made he was separate from sinners he was undefiled what a glorious high priest we have but he went in anyhow and what was your last two words for us, for us. ain't God good Amen. well we talked about our title being good things to come well, brother, tell us about some good things to come. Okay, verse 12. He entered in once. That was a good thing to come. Yeah. Those high priests went in all the time. Man, they never run out of cows, sheep and goats, and things to sacrifice. Kept on bringing them. They kept on slaughtering them. But Christ, the good thing to come was he entered in once so we see in verse 7 as we read you the high priest went in not without blood which he offered first of all for himself and then second for the errors or the sins of the people dear soul he went in as a fully accomplished fully accepted perfect high priest he didn't go in there needing to do something for himself. He went in as a fully accomplished, totally accepted high priest by God Almighty. That's a good thing to come compared to what they were. It's talking about it's a good thing to come from where they were to what we have. So we see that the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he, he was already an accomplished high priest when he went in. Chapter 9, verse 22. 
And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission or payment. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens, that is the, uh, the labor of washing, the altar, uh, everything, the, the candlestick, all of that was something that was a pattern of heaven. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be pur uh, purified with these kinds of bloods. But the heavenly things themselves, not the pattern or the things that imply heavenly things, but the heavenly things themselves, that is, those good things to come that Christ bought, they are purified with better sacrifices than these, not bulls and goats. For Christ has not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but he has entered into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest keeps on going in every year. He was a fully accomplished, fully perfect, completely undefiled, completely holy high priest when he went in. So not that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered in to the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then, if that was the way it was, then must Christ have suffered since the foundation of the world. Listen to this. I'm reading 926 of Hebrews. But now once, when? In the end of the world. Wow, the end of the world started when Christ died. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just like it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment, Christ was once offered. As men die once, so Christ, a man, died once. He didn't have to keep dying. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of, and it's the many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without any provision for sin unto a complete and eternal salvation. Brother Gene, you say he entered in as a fully accomplished high priest. Yes. How can you say that? Because the Bible does. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Hebrews 2, 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him, for whom are all things, and it became him, by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation, three words, Perfect through sufferings. So he entered in as a perfect captain of salvation. Those guys entered in as much sinners as we were before we got saved. I don't care if he was a high muckety muck. He still had to offer blood for himself. And he had to sprinkle blood on everything that was in there because all of that stuff was just gold and whatever and uh, cedar wood and whatever kind of wood. He had to sprinkle it with the hyssop and the blood of whatever animal God said. Everything in there was impure. But when Christ went into the presence of God for us, He entered in once because He was perfect and everything He did was perfect. These were not figures of those things that were to come, but they were the heavenly things themselves. You say, what does that mean? I don't have a slightest idea. Whatever satisfied God, whatever Jesus was required to do, he did it. Amen. I don't know. Maybe you can figure it out. If you do, come on up here and I'll sit down. But whatever it was, great is the mystery of godliness. Oh, listen, sinner. Uh, my dear friend, you and I don't have any idea of the vastness of the 
unbelievable work of redemption that Jesus Christ accomplished in the presence of his Father. My soul. But he did it. And he went in as a perfect high priest. He, he went in already made perfect through sufferings. Chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 14. I'm proving to you by scriptures that Christ was a fully accomplished high priest. Chapter 4 and verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, in case you're wondering, it's Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like we are. Three words. Yes. Yes. He didn't have no sin when he entered in. He was a perfectly accomplished high priest. Isn't that a good thing to come? Amen. Let us therefore, two words, let us therefore. You don't have to look down at your feet and kick rocks and stutter and stumble and say, well, Lord, I need to talk to you. But get in there and talk to God. Jesus paid the way for you. Isn't that good? Good things to come. You're already living in these good things to come. Maybe if you're not enjoying them and exercising your right in them, they still are good things to come. But you need to get them already come. Get in there and do it. Listen. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Hallelujah. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. First thing you're going to holler out for is mercy because you're going to realize you're a sinner in the presence of that glory. And then God's going to apply grace so you can be at peace. I can't get it out of my mind. I guess I never will. I remember when John F. Kennedy was the president and he's sitting there at his desk and they took a picture of all the high muckety-mucks that was in there, secretary of this and the king of that and all this was in the office wanting to talk to him. And right there under his desk sat his little daughter Caroline. Crouched, crouched, down, crouched down on the floor and playing on the floor under her daddy's desk and there was all them big old muckety-mucks in there. And I thought about, that's the way I do with Jesus. God's contending with all these high muckety-mucks. Satan, prince of the air. You know, Michael and Gabriel and all them guys. And seraphim, whatever in the world that is. And all cherubim, I don't know what to... My goodness, and Abraham and Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and everybody else. And there I am. Ain't got no more sense. And don't think nothing about it. Just playing under his desk because that's my father. Yeah. Ain't that good? Yeah. You could get it on this if you wanted to. Chapter, chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. An accomplished high priest. You can enter in boldly. It's your father. Hebrews 5, verse 8. Though he were a son, yet learned past tense he obedience by the things which he suffered now listen and learning obedience by the things he suffered he was being made perfect therefore he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him and read me the next verse out loud if you will chapter 5 and verse 10 So he learned obedience by the things which he suffered and it made him a perfect author of eternal salvation and high priest. And I submit to you the good things to come in chapter 9 and verse 11. One of them is he entered in as a fully accomplished and a completely accepted high priest between God Almighty and us. Psalm 21. Psalm 21. Psalm 21. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord. 
And in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire. Did you know you were Jesus' heart's desire? God has given him his heart's desire and hath not withholding the request of his lips. Pause and think about that. Selah is a musical rest. Just stop and think about it. For thou prevenest, or it is the word precede in the inner linear, for thou hast preceded him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed. How long? Forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. God has blessed Jesus Christ. And in doing so, he has blessed you. Everything Christ has, you are co-inheritors of. He did it with your name inscribed upon his breastplate. Let me read you something. You ready? God, who at separate times and in different manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins. Guess what the next two words are. Let me show you. What is it? Job done. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty of high. Listen, dear soul, he would have never come out of that ground if he hadn't been a perfect high priest. He would never have been able to offer the blood except he was a perfect high priest. And I guarantee you he would never have been able to be ascended and put at the right hand of the majesty on high if he had not already been a perfect high priest. He didn't go in to become a perfect high priest. He went in as an accomplished, fully accepted high priest after the order, and you read it to me, after the order of Melchizedek which was before the law and extends after the law and it's by grace and it's not limited to one family of priests, the Levites, and one nation on earth, Israel. He is a priest, the high priest, a priest of the most high God, Melchizedek kept saying. Ain't God good? He sat down. Chapter 10, Hebrews. Verse 10, by the which will, sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, I come to do thy will. By which will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Once for all. Went in once, came out once, all of you are redeemed. Isn't that something? And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices, it says, which can never take away sins. But listen to this. But this man, Christ, after he had offered for sins, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth, from that very time, expecting till all of his enemies should be made his footstool for by one offering, one offering he hath perfected Forever. them that are sanctified. Have you ever been to a concert? I'm talking about of an orchestra. 
they used to load us up on them old school buses and take us downtown to Atlanta. I think it was the Fox Theater, I can't remember. And they were going to have a, a music appreciation thing. And we didn't care. I didn't have, I didn't care about going to the Fox Theater. It, it was all lost on me. I just wanted to get out of school. And they took me down there, and, and the first thing was, boom, 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 kick, 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 all of that noise. It was the orchestra tuning up. Jesus was tuned up when he got there. They wasn't a oops or whatever. Our band director, when he would do this, look at you, he'd point at you and he'd do like this. It means you're off key, you're out of tune, you ain't keeping up, stop playing. <laughs> but Jesus never had to get I guess the people listening to the tape are wondering what is. <laughs> that was what I said when I drug my finger across my throat. He was ready. He was capable. He was perfect. He was already accepted as our high priest. Holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. You ain't never seen nothing good like that before. Right. This really is a good thing. And to prove that he did it right, he sat down. And where did he sit down? At the bus stop waiting on the next bus. At the right hand of the majesty on high. Move God over. And sat down on the throne with his father. Isn't that good? Don't you just love him? And in our verse that I can't get in Isaiah 53, I cannot quit reading this. I can't quit quoting this. I'm stuck in a in a rut. Every time I open my mouth to y'all, I'm talking about Jesus satisfying God the Father, and I'm talking about God calling you out of the world and calling the world out of you and, and, and calling you like in Revelation 18, 4, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of her sins and her plagues. Calling the harlot church influence out of you, purifying you, and calling you out of organized religion and calling you back to the spirituality of God. And I just can't re quit reading this verse. You probably know it by heart. Isaiah 53, 11. Why don't we just all read it together? You ready? Isaiah 53, 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Woo, Glory. Man, that'd make a Presbyterian shout. By the knowledge of him, if you want to straighten it out a little bit so you can understand it, he, God the Father, shall see not the nails, not the thorns, not the spear, but the travail of his soul. soul. Brother Jamie, what was that this morning you said he would give us rest for? Yeah, our soul. Our soul. You know why he did? Why he could? Because... His soul was right in his redemption. He was a perfect sacrifice and a perfect high priest and shall be satisfied. Then it says, by the knowledge of him, by your understanding and knowing God, as Jonas brought us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, by the knowledge of him shall my righteous, did you get it? He's a righteous servant. He's already a perfect high priest when he went in. Shall my righteous servant justify, and again, the many. For he shall, glory to God, glory to God, bear their iniquities. I'm sorry, Jesus. Every time I read that, I want to repent. And I should. Ain't God good? Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Verse 10. Psalm 103, verse 10. 
He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. I like this. As far as the east is from the west. Can't go east till you start going west. You can go north till you head south again. Get up to the top of the globe. You can turn back down and start down the other side of the globe. You headed south, but you can't go east till you start going west. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, and so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it and is gone, and the place thereof knoweth it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is how long? Upon them that fear him, and his children, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, the new covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Isn't that God? Isn't that good? He went in as a perfect, that's a good thing. Oh, listen. Those Old Testament priests had to pass through two courts to get in there. The outer court and then the inner court to go into the Holy of Holies. Jesus Christ passed through the outer court of his incarnation. All men could go. All Israelites could go into the outer court. His incarnation, being a man. But when he went through the second court, he entered through the court of his sanctification. He learned obedience by the things which he suffered. There was those implements of cleansing, and those altars and those washings and so forth and all these things that he might enter into the Holy of Holies. And then he passed on into the Father's presence in the holy place for you. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. That's the incarnation of Jesus Psalm 24 is talking about. And then in Daniel chapter 7 and verse number 9, I'll read it to you. If I can get there. I beheld to the thrones of the Gentiles. The Gentile thrones are over and done with now. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels, providences, interlocking providences, as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousands times ten thousands stood before him, and the judgment was set, and the books were open. And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him came with the clouds of heaven. If you'll read Acts chapter number 1, you'll find out that on this side, when they were looking up, he went up through a cloud. This is when he got there. He came in that cloud before his eternal father, the Ancient of Days. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. And dominion is his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Ain't God good? The outer court of his incarnation became man. Looking at himself as he was in the womb. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. The sacrifice and offerings thou hast prepared, thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. The consciousness and awareness of his humanity 
was first being realized upon him and he realized that God had never been satisfied with sacrifice and offering the old covenant was just wasn't going to get it. It was going to be folded up and it was going to decay and he replaced it with a new covenant. I come to do thy will, O God. Glory to God. He came fully understanding and fully persuaded and fully determined to live a perfect life, to die a perfect death, enter into the glories of that last section of the Holy of Holies in that mystery of God the Son presiding, preventing, pre presenting the blood of the Lamb of God to the Father. And God, having seen the travail of his soul, said, Son, I'm satisfied. And now by the knowledge of him, my righteous servant shall justify the many. Your Savior didn't go in there squawking and squeaking like that orchestra did down there at the Fox Theater. And I thought, Lord, I didn't want to come down in and hear this. That was just him tuning up. He didn't have to tune up. He didn't need no trial run. He didn't say, well, the first game of horseshoes just going to be, just get used to the horseshoes and the length of the, didn't need that. You ever seen these old funny cars race? Have you? They sit back there and they got them big old tires. They're about this wide and they slick. And before the green light comes on for them to actually race, they'll hit that starter, I mean, hit that, that gas and spin them tires and smoke will go flaming out. You wouldn't believe it. But to have to get the tires hot before they can actually race. You'll lose the race with cold tires. So they just burn them things out and it's all kind of rubber on the track right there where they spin them out. Jesus didn't have to spin his tires and get them hot. He was already at the right temperature and besides, there wasn't no competitor. He won the race before he got started. I'm sorry if my illustrations don't suit you and your little world. Okay, so I watch racing every once in a while. Get over it. <laughs> but I see Christ in it. You can't fault me for that. I'm trying to tell you, you got a perfect Savior who is a perfect high priest. He's a perfect lamb. He's a perfect intercessor. He's a perfect mediator. He is perfect God and he is perfect man. And that was one of the good things to come. What's the other one? It's in the same verse. Hebrews 9, 12. He entered in once is the first one. The second one is having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now there's a heap more good things that you could glean out of this. But I may do like Jonas did this morning, just read you the whole ninth chapter so you can't say that I didn't tell you about it. And I enjoyed that. And he did good with all them names, didn't he? Jephthah and all them fellers. But there's two things that I wanted to bring you, and these are the two. It's not just two good things, but good things to come. You still enjoying and benefit and discovering the good things of God as you live your life. And as you experience different needs of Christ, you experience more good things. But this is just two I wanted to bring out of verse 12. The first one was he entered in once. The second good thing is having obtained eternal redemption for us. Daniel 9, I do want you to turn to this one. Daniel 9, 24. You're going to have to do some reading. It's not much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. And you don't have to count them. I'll just let you read down to the next comma. Because I know you ate so much lunch. I won't finish that Daniel 9 24 now listen the one thing that burns me up about religion is they don't think anything was absolutely totally 100% accomplished at the cross they go in the grocery store and pay for a loaf of bread they come out with a loaf of bread 
But Jesus went to the cross and he paid with his blood, but it's up to the sinner. <sighs> Makes me sick. God purchased something at the cross and he got it. Amen, brother. Thank you. Johnny, 9%. <laughs> Listen, Daniel 9, 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression, comma, read me down to the next comma. And to make an end of the What did you just read me? Don't tell me what the Bible said. said. Tell me what you say it says. What did it say? You have to say what the Bible said, don't you? <laughs> you can't say it any other way. Now, again, what did it say? And what? Make an end of sins. Now, I don't care if you can't get Daniel's 70 weeks all sorted out. Well, get in line. But out of this, I understand that when Messiah comes, he's going to finish the transgression which is going to make his father satisfied and that will tell me again what was your phrase make it in. so jot down John 1930 what does that say I knew you'd make me have to tell you John 1930 it is finished what does that mean he made an end of sin Having obtained eternal redemption for us. Yay! Ain't that good? Well, I told you it was two good things. He was a totally accepted high priest when he went in. And he didn't come out till he had made an end of sin thank you ain't God good upon the holy city that's new Jerusalem to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in Everlasting life. Woo, glory. How long are you going to be saved, sir? How long are you going to be saved, ma'am? Forever. Forever. Ain't that good? Yes. And to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Jesus Christ fulfilled all righteousness. Well, Dr. Bottle Stopper is selling his book down here and on Thursday he's going to be here signing them and he's telling you what must happen in prophecy before the Lord can come back. Pew! Shoot him and tell God he died. Jesus has fulfilled it all. All he need to do is come back. Be you also ready for in an hour when you think not. The Son of Man cometh. Can't read lips, can you? Okay. All right. The Son of Man cometh. Is it the Bible or is it not? I don't care what the theories are. I don't care about Larkin's or whatever his face was chart. And you got all this stuff lined up. I don't care about Schofield's seven dispensations. I ain't caring about them. I didn't get called by them and I ain't studying them. I'm studying God's word. That's who called me and he said... He would make an end to sins and he would finish the transgression and bring in everlasting righteousness. First man that ever got saved, he's still saved. Waiting on the last man to get saved, bless God when he gets saved, he'll be saved as long as the rest of them will. And if you're saved, and I hope you are, and I'm saved, and I hope I am, we're saved on purpose eternally to make an end of sins. Having obtained Colossians 1.12 
having obtained everlasting or eternal redemption. Isn't that a good thing? Well, it's Baptist doctrine, once saved, always saved. I ain't talking about Baptist doctrine. I'm talking about what God said. If the Baptists agree with this, good. I'll stand with it. But I'm standing with God. And he said it was forever. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, that is, our fit. She's a help meet, a help fit, fit for him. Which hath made us fit to be equal takers, partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us, past tense, from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the of sins. Hallelujah. Even the forgiveness of sins hath delivered us from the power of darkness, hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood that was shed 2,000 years ago. What does that mean? The forgiveness of sin. 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. Verse 7. 1 John chapter 1. Verse 7. But if we walk in the light. As he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. But it's because the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all, all sin. sin. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. He is just. Not only to forgive us our sins, but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that good? Yes. He not only forgives you but he cleanses you while we're here Revelation 1 5 Revelation 1 5 and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead you say, well, Abraham was one of God's and he died before Jesus. Yeah, but Jesus' death brought all of them up from the grave. They, they brought all of them. He brought all of them. He was the first one was raised of his own holiness. And the first begotten of the dead and the princes of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood just a minute now now what is ours the last part of that verse unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins so what is ours sin. our sins but what is his his own blood it was his blood had the right to keep it didn't he it wasn't mine and your blood. We didn't have no claim on it. You couldn't force God to do that. He did it because he wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. What did you have to offer? Same thing I did. Sins. I couldn't even make a down payment. I was bankrupt. Sin left me bankrupt. I was, listen, not only did I not have anything, I owed everything I wasn't just at zero I was in the negative so I was in the red isn't God good he'll forgive our transgressions and remember them no more though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool 
for what the law could not do. Lord, you said your law was perfect and holy and good. Yeah, I did. Ain't nothing wrong with the law. Lord, what's wrong with the law? You or what's wrong with the law, Gene Breed? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God had to send his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin to condemn sin in the flesh. Romans 8, 3. Mm. Isn't that something? God made a perfect law. It had to be a perfect law because it was just expressions of, of God's perfect character. You say, well, can I rent a room in your house? Yeah, but here's the, here's the rules and regulations. What's the rules and regulations about how to live with me? I own the house. This is what I do. You, I don't want you in here messing it up. you got to be agreeable to this. God said, we said, Lord, can we come home with you? Yeah. But I, you got to understand, this is how I am. And you got to be ye therefore holy even as I am holy. He said, I can't do that. Right. Well, I ain't got no place for you. Is there nothing else you can do? For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemn sin in the flesh and that made you and me accepted in the beloved ain't God good two good things what are they number one he entered in once as fully accomplished high priest. Number two, having obtained eternal redemption for you. You take them two home with you today, okay?